It's a special episode today. The boys are back in town. We've all been reunited. Justin is now in here as well. You can feel the sexiness coming through the camera, can't you? Anyway, uh, here's today's giveaway. Maps Anabolic. Free access to Maps Anabolic. You know what you need to do, just like on all the other episodes. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours. Boost us in the YouTube algorithm. So leave comments, lots of comments. And if we pick your comment, you'll win free access to Maps Anabolic. But don't forget, you got to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. One more thing before we start the show, and this is a good show. Uh, two programs, two workout programs are on sale. Maps Strong and Maps Powerless. They're both half off. Go check them out. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code August Special with no space for that discount. All right, here comes the show. The boys are back in town. All systems are go. God, it feels so good oh, to have us all back man. together in the studio right now. Isn't Puts that me nice? in such a better mood. Is it just me? Justin look uh, buffed or something? I mean, you know, it's just it's an optical illusion. I think um, we just got smaller. We lost some muscle. Damn. <laughs> That's what I was hoping. I didn't want to happen. say that. Yeah. yeah. Welcome yeah. back, dude. How's it feel to be back Thanks. in the in the house here it's in, it's in the the eye of the storm in here man missed yeah. you guys man. i know it's way better in here i mean i, I hate being remote dude that's lame you yeah know? like yeah oh hey i'm all way over here everybody else is having a good time doing yeah. a bunch of housework and stuff yeah. in between <laughs> <laughs> dogs barking like every two seconds you know kids you know like hey dad where's this i'm busy yeah i'm working yeah, i'm supposed to be working yeah no it's good to have you back dude very nice to have you back. Yeah, it's so, good. So, uh, Adam, we should talk about the the, stu the intermittent fasting study. There. Oh, that Lane uh, posted about. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Really interesting to me. Yeah, so, so basically they, they compared three different groups, but the two groups that were important to look at were the there was a continual caloric restricted group, and then there was a group that every other day fasted. Yeah. And essentially, they ate the same amount of calories throughout the week, right? So one group had a calorie deficit. I think it was 75% of maintenance every single day. The other group would eat 150% of their calories one day and the next day not eat any calories. So at the end of the week, similar same. You know, calorie deficit. At the deficit. end of the week, the calorie deficit was the same between the two groups. Yeah. The only difference was one was not eating every other day, and then the other one was consistently lower than maintenance. Yes. Every day. And what they hmm. found was that the every other day fasting group lost muscle, whereas the continual caloric restricted group lost almost all body fat. So they lost similar amounts of weight. Yeah. But the every other day not eating interesting. resulted in some in, in muscle loss, which I think is very interesting. Pretty significant too. Very significant. Yeah. It was like fifty percent. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And now he makes a good point that and and this is true the human body doesn't really have a good way of storing uh, amino acids and protein, right? So we could store body fat. That's pretty limitless. We could store glycogen from carbohydrates. There's, there's a limit to that, but you actually had a pretty good store in your liver and in your muscle that you can utilize. But we don't really store amino acids. And so the theory is, is that because they didn't feed their bodies protein every other day, because we don't store it in a way to where we can utilize it, the body pared down uh, muscle. So very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it, well, I, I also think that, and I know they did a really good job of the controls, right? To, to tease out like all the other <laughs> potential variables. Yeah. But we just talked the other day about how, uh, you know, we were talking about getting over from being sick and that our body types are the type that, man, if I don't eat, I, and I lose 10 pounds, I can pretty much guarantee that half of that is muscle yeah. and half of it is just body fat. It's just, that's just the nature of the beast with my body type. But then I brought up the, my, the ex-girlfriend that I had that was the opposite of that. It felt, I felt like she could starve her body, over train and under consume for extended periods of time. And the weight that she would just hang on to all her muscle. Mm. So you got to think that there's still, even with this study and as good as it controlled it is, there's still going to be an individual variance of people oh, that yeah. still, yeah, there's, there's always got to factor that. In, yeah. Sure. Re respond really well with that. And I feel like you, if you're the group that would probably lose half muscle and half body fat, you kind of probably know who you are. Like, I think that you're the type of person where you can relate to that. So when I shared that the other day that, hey, if I don't eat and I are under consume, I'm sick, whatever, mm -hmm. I don't exercise, a week goes by and I lose 10 pounds, I can pretty much guarantee half of that is, is muscle mass too. If you can relate to that, then 
this is probably this study to me speaks yeah. to you. I would assume it's more often people like that than the kind that just keep muscle on. That's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. I remember one guy used to work for me. Uh, he was a porter at uh, Hillsdale, and he just was. He was always jacked. He always he just looked super jacked all the time. And I started to become friends with him. And when I saw his diet, I actually thought he was full of crap because uh, this is no joke. The guy would eat like peanut butter and jelly sandwich uh, or a meal would be French fries mm -hmm. or a pop tart. Like he had the worst diet of all time. He worked out super inconsistently and just was jacked all the time. And then he went through a period where I convinced him to take a protein shake. I'm like, bro, increase your protein. Let's just see what happens. And he blew up. <laughs> but I mean, that's rare, right? Most people are not like that. Yeah. And I got, I got DMS about this study. Like people always like to ask us cause we've talked about the, we've talked about intermittent fasting. And yep. I think that, um, for the most part, um, for the most part, we're fans of it. If, if, Depends if you how you use it. How you use it. And so they were asking what my opinion or what I thought about it. And I said, it doesn't change anything for me as far as my view of intermittent fasting. Because I think from the very beginning, we've mm -hmm. talked about the reason that you should do it is more for the, the, the spiritual practice or the relationship with food, yeah. which that doesn't change. No. Right? That, that doesn't change. This study doesn't change at all. Now, if you were somebody who was trying to use fasting as a tool to get shredded and get lean, this probably should change the way you look at it. Absolutely. But yep. we've, I said, we've talked out about that for a long time, that that's a, a terrible idea is to use fasting mm -hmm. in that manner. And where it has the most value is the, the relationship with food. And so that doesn't change. No, so I, I know. I, I, I totally agree. I think if you're fasting to get shredded or fasting to look different, uh, you're, then you're, you're encouraging, or at least you're putting yourself in a situation where you, you could probably develop a bad relationship uh, with food. Um, now, here's the other thing. Here's another part to it, right? Let's talk physiologically. For some people, fasting improves their health above and beyond uh, calorie restriction. Who are these people? The people that come to mind are people with gut issues. Mm -hmm. gut, now, this is me, right? So I, I uh, on and off, you guys know I deal with gut issues. It's always something that I have to kind of keep in mind. And sometimes the only thing that improves my gut health is to not eat for you know, 48 hours, give my gut a break, reduce the inflammation, uh, you know, maybe let things settle down. Now, in the case where fasting is the, the one option that improves your health, then it's probably better for muscle growth for you than to be less healthy. It would be for me, right? So if my option is terrible gut health or I don't eat for two days, which one is going to be better for... Yeah, but don't you think this study proves, though, that it, you don't have to actually fast to get that same benefit? You could just stay in a low cal... No, not, low for cal gut, not for gut health. That's not a study. So I, I bet if you took a bunch of people who deal with uh, gut health issues, people with irritable bowel syndrome, uh, people with inflammatory gut issues then I think it would look a little bit different. I don't know if I agree with that. I feel like the research that like Walter Longo did and stuff about the fasting mimicking diet would show that, you know, if you were running a 500 calorie diet for a week or two weeks, you would get the same gut health benefits as the person who's decided to eat nothing. He's he studied uh, cell autophagy, the anti-cancer effects, and it is very similar. But 500 calories and not eating is pretty close. And also what he's giving people to eat is... Uh, are foods that are like super uh, non-reactive. Yeah, and, and that's a, to me, that's an extreme analogy for I'm sure the studies and, and, and testing they did like that. Uh, I personally feel if as long as I'm in a in a good size deficit, I feel those benefits. Yeah. I, I, again, this is my personal experience uh, on how I view it, but it, it seems like the research is pointing that direction too. Though that if you were to just run a very low calorie diet. Um, you would get the same gut health benefits. Too. I, yeah, I mean, it depends. Look, there's times when it's so bad for me that yeah. it's nothing. I have to eat nothing. It depends on how reactive days. you are. Yeah, well, it, it's also issues. easier, right? So if you're if you don't know what's causing bad gut health uh, and what what foods could possibly potentially be flaring you up by eliminating everything, you, you're you're pretty much you you're covering all your bases. bases right? yeah, Where yeah. if you eat a very low calorie, 500 to 900 calories, yeah. you may still be consuming that 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 offender that uh, that you don't know about or whatever. Yeah. So I could see that. Plus, I, you know, I think we tend, sometimes we run into issues when we live and die by studies because we can sometimes ignore, sure. you know, yeah. what's, what's working well for us. We're like, ah, oh, you know, I know this works great for me, but the study says that I should try this and then mm -hmm. they do it and then they don't feel good for whatever reason. 
uh, but they stick to it because, well, I read this study. There's always outliers. That's all I'm saying. There's always outliers. Oh, yeah. Of, I mean, there, yeah. that that study doesn't take into consideration uh, behaviors, right? Is it easier for somebody? Because uh, that, that's all control, right, in a study. But in real life, is it easier for somebody to consistently measure their calories every single day and say, hey, I'm going to take 75% of my maintenance yeah, every day? Or is it easier for someone to say, hey, every other day I'm just not going to eat? Yeah, mm -hmm. this is true. You know what I'm saying? And which one is more likely to be, uh, are you more likely to be consistent with? So there are other variables that I think that you could challenge. But I mean, man, it, to, to see half muscle uh, and half body fat loss, that's that's pretty significant. Now, uh, my experience yeah. when I do long fasts, I definitely lose a little bit of muscle size, but it comes back really quick when I go back to eating. So that's the other part too. Uh, is that you know? Well, that's a good point, and and that's something that this. this I mean, how many times does that happen? This to you, right? study has, doesn't, uh, and we've talked about this before, right? Of uh, about um, you know fasting and then kind of resetting, and then the way your body just responds to like protein afterwards. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, could you make the case that? Sure, you you may lose a little bit of muscle, but because you've uh, you know resensitized yeah, everything by, by purging for yeah. for a, day, a full day like that, now your body responds maybe even more positively to yeah. the protein. Like I don't know, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So well, speaking other speaking of studies, uh, I read this great article on uh, aspirin. So and I, so I've been reading a lot about aspirin because. I'm going to be taking uh, low dose aspirin probably for the next few months, just because when you read about the potential effects of the bat soup uh, disease long term, it's usually yeah. related to like blood My clotting. E corona. Yeah, and so it's you know a baby aspirin every day. It's 81 milligrams, really small dose. It you know reduces risk of blood clotting and all that stuff. But anyway, there was a lot of did you know there's a lot of health benefits that have been proven by taking a little bit of aspirin every day. I'm going to read some of these to you because. Uh, they're pretty remarkable. I, I wasn't really familiar with some of these. I've so. heard it recommended so often, uh, and I didn't know if it was like a blood pressure related or like what all these other benefits were to it. Well, here, check this out. There's a study in, out of Australia that showed that people who used aspirin at least twice a week for five years reduced the risk of skin cancer by 60%. Whoa. People hmm. who used it every day for five years saw a reduction of 90% wow. from, from taking that. It also, of course, we talk about heart disease. It does show a, a dramatic reduction in heart attacks and vascular uh, effects, probably because it you know thins the blood. Mm -hmm. Free radical damage, another one. It, it looks like it, it could help with mitochondrial function at low doses. Uh, of course, fights inflammation, and then it reduces the risk of uh, colon cancer in a lot of people. Now, so if, if it's that positive, why hasn't this become something that's like a multivitamin that everybody just takes? Because What's the because risk? of its blood thinning effects, it can cause gastric bleeding in some mm. people, which is very dangerous. Some people are also can be allergic to aspirin. So there's not, it doesn't have- But I mean, let's say you tease those two things out. I mean, then the, are the rest all positive benefits? It, I mean, so far from what I'm reading, yes. Now, you know, it's standard of care when you have uh, like a stint put in, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go, to the hospital, you go to the doctor and they see that, oh, you got you know partial blockage, let's put a stint in there. They will put you on a baby aspirin uh, every day, which again, that's 81. It's funny, I wrote baby aspirin on my Instagram. People are like, they sell- Aspirin for babies? Like, no, no. It's just a low dose of aspirin. That's <laughs> Bubblegum flavor. That yeah. you take every yeah. single day. But uh, but yeah, so I'll be doing that for the next few months just because of, you know, what, what we kind of got over just to kind of be sure, you know, careful or whatever. God, it, it almost seems like you should do it no matter what, even if you weren't. I mean, it, if, unless you have those two conditions that you brought well, up. Well, all those other, I'm, see, I'm weary about that because all those effects, I think you can get from maintaining good omega-3 fatty acids in your diet. So uh, like fish oil. So fish oil shows a lot of similar effects and it also has a blood thinning that effect. That dramatic? 90%? By no, it? not that dramatic. But I mean, I'm always weary of taking like, I, I don't know if I want to take, because you know, aspirin, like I said, it can increase gastric bleeding and can cause other issues. So I don't know. I'm going to do a little bit more reading. But it's fascinating. I don't know. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's one of the oldest drugs that's been around forever. I think it's been around for I don't know how many decades. And is it because it's so uh, it, because it's not or because it's so s small amount that the the adverse effects to your liver is not uh, up there that wouldn't be considered? Yeah, that's another like one that every single right, day. Right? Because I mean, ibuprofen is a little more harsh on on your liver, right? Yeah, and in eighty one milligrams is a really low dose of aspirin. But you you know what? That's true. They also said if you don't have if you have like a liver enzymes that are a little off or your kidneys aren't great function, they don't recommend 
um, taking it on a regular basis. So mm. I don't know, it's kind of weird. And then along those lines, dude, I read a crazy stud, a crazy um, article about a girl who she was at a party and they were all doing, they were all taking LSD. So you know how we've been talking about like psychedelic research? Mm-hmm. So that's why I went, went down this rabbit hole, right? There was this this party where they were dosing themselves with LSD, but somebody like missed, you know, made a mistake on the decimal point. So instead of taking a hundred micrograms or whatever a single dose is, they took like a thousand. Wow. So this girl ended up taking uh, something like 150 doses Whoa. of LSD at once. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So here's what happened. This is the weird part. First of all, LSD is- Did her mind die and then resurrect? Well, so it's very non-toxic. It's pretty hard to overdose and kill yourself from LSD or even magic mushrooms. Contrary to what we were taught in D.A.R.E. when we were kids. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I actually... Nancy Reagan was really hammering. I actually had a teacher tell us that that this one girl, or this one guy took too much LSD and thought he was an orange and sat in the corner and was scared someone was going to squeeze him. Like, she told us this crazy story. We she were told that you, you'll jump in front of trains. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm serious. Like, that yeah. was what we were... T- I, re- I, like, vividly remember, like, that story and that... Remember he'd come with his, like, uh, briefcase and he'd open the briefcase. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, and then the briefcase would have all the j- different drugs yeah, and, then, like, and, and then he'd hey, go kid. through and they'd tell stories of, of each one and how they affect people. Dude. And I remember LSD be, like be, oh my God, that one will make you jump in front of trains. Say yes to your life. And when it comes to drugs and alcohol, just say no. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Think of that as a kid. Do you, the, you know which one, fa- and I'll get back to what happened to this girl, but you know yeah, what, sorry. what fascinated oh. me the most when they would do that hmm. were the stories of PCP. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Because they, they, they would say like, oh, it took... Ten officers, like superhuman strength. Oh, yeah. All of a sudden, yeah, secretly yeah. there's part of you that wants. Are to you try. kidding me? <laughs> like you turn into the Hulk. Yeah, I'm PCP? gonna do one of these. I might try Dude, that one. I out. was obsessed with the Incredible Hulk <laughs> and He Man, and I wanted to be strong. And I'm like, yeah, why are they withholding this like, from us? PCP made you a str- made him as strong as ten men. Like, <laughs> hmm. Working. Yeah, where would you find this crazy? I've drug? actually never. So I've been around most drugs. I don't think I've ever seen or seen anyone do PCP before. Have you guys? My well, dad. I should hope not. What? Yeah, my yeah. dad had a, not him. He didn't. Oh, do PCP. <laughs> you're like yeah. My dad used to do yeah. it. Yeah, he used to sprinkle <laughs> so him in the bathroom. Yeah, just, you know, sprinkling. Your dad knew somebody, somebody that did. My dad had a. Uh, so he used to own a, a you know tile and marble setting company, and one of his employees actually showed up to work uh, on uh, PCP. What? And, and but he got taking, hell of shit done that day. T- <laughs> I don't. <laughs> no, I mean they're throwing all kinds of stones on his back. Yeah, I got this. No, my dad said he was acting really weird, and then he was taking off all his clothes because he was really hot. And then they had to send him home, and you know they ended up firing the guy or whatever. But yeah, he, that's it. No, there was no violence or anything like that involved. But that's the only only time I've ever heard of anybody. And you know that because how did you guys find out it was PCP? Because the guy, my, my, I mean, the guy respected my father, so he apologized oh, he told after. Him. Yeah, and he's oh, like, I'm wow. sorry, I, you know, I have this drug problem. Yeah, I've never been around it, but have you? No, no, no. Yeah, I can't say I have. Yeah, I mean, it's got bad. Uh, definitely cocaine. But the, yeah. Doug, what like, about you? Did you go through the like a PCP industry. era? No, actually, no. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's got bad PR. It's like PCP and crack. Those are the two drugs that just they got bad yeah, PR. It's like the cheaper versions <laughs> of the, PR. Yeah. They do. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it doesn't sound cool or like cocaine sounds. Like, oh yeah, if you're rich or whatever, mm, so <laughs> crack, luxurious. Yeah, you're gonna smoke crack. What yeah. the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. You know, yeah. same thing with PCP. <laughs> anyway, this girl. Does 150 doses at once, and she was a she had bipolar disorder. Oh, okay, also. so she's got yes yeah, so, some condition going into this. Yes, so he, wow. this is what happened. So she does this Cured and her. obviously loses her mind, acts erratic. At one point, she's on the floor, and it looks like she might be having a seizure. They can't figure out what's going on. Anyway, her dad, they call her dad. He picks her. They take her to the hospital, and in between her weird trips, which lasted I don't remember how long, mm-hmm. she said to her dad. It's it's fine. It's over. It's gonna. It's it. This is the end. And he didn't know what he was, she was talking about. You know what she? So here's what she was referring to: her bipolar. She her bipolar disorder. Oh, it's wow. over. She comes out of it and rem, and had it, like no There's symptoms. A breakthrough. Yeah, no symptoms of bipolar wow. disorder anymore. After that crazy. Now I'm not. I don't want anybody to go. Uh, <laughs> think you're gonna, cure, gonna cure it? Yeah. But how weird is that? That's. I mean, that's really crazy. Cause okay, so I actually got into this new series on Netflix. It was. It's about the whole MK Ultra. Uh, oh, what? You know, experimenting. What's it called? So, um, you know, I I don't remember. But uh, I mean, you could look it up, Doug. But like, so 
there was it's from the perspective of the son of one of the agents in the CIA who actually like they they said jumped out the window but uh later they also said fell out the window and then there was all this like accidentally and there's all these like conflicting reports of like what actually happened uh, and they wouldn't say specifically who it was because it was an agent and then something went wrong with the experiment. And so I think it was like 20 years or something of the family not knowing what happened to their dad. And then this poor kid like grows up. He has this traumatic experience that his dad died and like nobody's telling him what really happened. And so like he's kind of go investigating and eventually, uh, you know, he basically like pinpoints it down to like a failed uh, experiment that the CIA was conducting and they had to actually come forward with it and uh, figure out how to deal with it. Cause it was all becoming public and, and he's out there talking about it. And the CIA is like, Oh no, like, like how are we going to handle this? It, it turns out they actually had, had to uh, go get the president to apologize to them personally, which then stopped them from suing uh, the CIA. Wow. And so anyway, it's this whole thing. I just got into the very first episode and it, it's a whole series of this. Is it Wormwood? Kind of it. Yes, Wormwood. Oh. So give me the give me the, the, the basic skinny on what the the conspiracy around MK Ultra. It's not a conspiracy. It's not conspiracy. It's, it's, there, there's, oh, there's, it's, there's no yes, conspiracy it's around it. No, it's no, documented. It's, they, they they messed with a lot of people with yeah, but, these so psychedelic give me the skinny drugs. On it. Like, they what's used the, psychedelic drugs okay. to see if there was potential for brainwashing mm -hmm. or controlling people's minds the the this was around the cold war time yes, yes. Okay. cold war is the information war so they basically assumed that the soviets were using these techniques yes. and then they use that as a, an excuse to basically mess with uh u.s citizens you know inside here in the states to see basically to see like if it's possible could they and this know, was this military was doing this cia, CIA was doing CIA. it cia was doing this yeah here's the thing people need to understand during the cold war and we totally forget right how crazy it was literally you had two countries with thousands of nukes pointed at each other and so all bets were off any idea mm -hmm. That sounded like it might help us survive a nuclear holocaust or kill or not, you know, the Soviets not, you know, destroy us. They, I mean, there was literally, there was 100%. This was signed off by the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Only reason why it didn't happen was because the president said no. There was, I can't remember the name of it. It was Operation uh, Northwoods, I think mm -hmm. it was called. They actually came up with the plan to stage terrorist attacks mm -hmm. in Florida and blame it on the Cubans to gain public support to invade Cuba wow. because they, you know, because Russians had Cuban, you know, were putting their missiles uh, in Cuba. Right. So it was a joint, it was signed off by the Joint Chiefs of Staff. They were like, this is a good idea. Let's pretend <laughs> there's a terrorist <laughs> attack, blame it on the Cubans. And that's and where there's checks and balances, you know? <laughs> it's like, come on, dude, it's terrible. Idea. It's crazy. Yeah. And then with MK Ultra, they actually, I think they took a bunch of, I want to say, either prostitutes or men mm -hmm. that went to brothels. I yes. think it was men that went to brothels. Mm -hmm. So they took a bunch of... They, they There's found, one in San Francisco that they actually uh, uncovered in. Yeah, so they found a brothel, right? Okay. Illegal prostitution. Yep. And then the guys that went there didn't know that their water had LSD in it. Mm -hmm. And they just observed. Let's just see you know, what happens. And, and of course, the way that they cover their tracks is like, these guys aren't going to report us. They went to a brothel. So yep. <laughs> no one's going to say shit. So what happened? <laughs> It's uh, they they record all those like interactions and yeah and they just I again like I, I'm gonna have to get further into the series to get specifics. Oh, does this series get into that too? I, I don't know. I think it goes. I think it goes in that direction because well, it so it's interesting because it, it goes from the perspective of this kid and his family, like you know him not knowing what his dad did completely for a living, and so they're kind of like retracing all those steps. Like he was part of the bioengineering, I think, uh, department and, or chemical engineering. Like he was part of like the whole biochemical experimentation stuff. And, and so like it went wow. horribly wrong uh, for him. And, and so he's kind of telling it and then they're dramatizing it. So they had like this whole thing where, uh, they, they show the agents all dramatized, like, uh, trying to figure out, uh, you know, how they're going to keep this under wraps and then, uh, setting each other up like with, so they're all toasting with drinks. And then he basically dosed like all the agents and all the agents start tripping out and 
oh my you know, because there's bro. some of them that are like, oh, this is pseudoscience nonsense, and we shouldn't, you know, fund money towards this experimenting. And you know, meanwhile, they're like, just all of a sudden, you know, the Dude. paint starts peeling. You know, <laughs> you know what terrified them? They did this one test where they took a bunch of soldiers in a mock like battle, and then didn't tell the soldiers and gave them all LSD. And the reason why they got terrified was because the soldiers stopped. And just, they just like, I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to sit here and look <laughs> they're at these like, flowers. What's and, the meaning of life? You know? Yeah, like, dude. Yeah, they're just like, they're like oh, why shit. are we even doing this? Like, we should love each other. Yeah, yeah no one's going to want to kill anymore if we give them like that. And it freaked them out. Oh, yeah, wow. dude. yeah oh. crazy. Yeah. I watched your recommendation last night, your snake eyes. Oh, what did you think? Oh, yeah. What's yeah. Good? I mean, I thought it was really good. I have to say, though, I, I mean, I was pretty baked last night, too, though. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, so the baked lips, eyes. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, you got to kind of mean That makes everything different. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Make it, that, like, so uh, if someone goes fun. back and watches it and be like, Adam, I can't believe you recommended that. I mean, I thought it was, it was, uh, it was, it didn't get very good a rating, first yeah. of all. So I was like a little weary about watching it, but then I know you recommended it. So I was like, oh, I'll watch it. it I thought it was entertaining. Yeah. And again, if I'm, I'm, if you're really stoned, it's probably even more entertaining. So yeah. that was, I mean, last night was my first time smoking in like weeks since everything. So, oh, yeah. How'd you feel? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, it felt amazing because I did, I think it didn't take very much at all. And it, I didn't have that much. I didn't think it was going to hit me like, that and then I got up to go get a drink of water one time and it's like I was like oh oh wow that was more than, <laughs> well, more than what I what I needed and yeah. getting getting Hit a bowl and yeah. getting a bowl of magic spoon yeah. too yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did dude. so my taste buds are coming back yeah. and I did I did actually have a big old massive bowl of of magic spoon last I'm oh. still on I'm on the the blueberry with banana kick right now uh, have you tried the maple waffle yeah the maple waffle I've I haven't it. had it yet. So yeah. I haven't had the maple waffle yet. I remember I, I'm I like still it. I'm still powering through my my blueberry. Oh, yeah, that's why you had like 85 boxes. <laughs> yeah. of I, I forgot <laughs> like, about like that. Like 70, You're dude. Stocked so for the I'd say I'm about 50 <laughs> percent. Uh, the apocalypse. Right now. You know, yeah. I, you know what I was thinking actually. I, I wonder what this because there it's obviously got a long shelf life, right? Because it's dry of course, of course. cereal. Dude, that's probably stock up on it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's probably good like emergency food, right? Sure. Because one of the problems with storing with emergency protein. food is getting protein. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, how do you, you know, it's like canned tuna and then, you know, what else? You're going to have spam? Plan for the apocalypse with yeah. Magic Spoon. Yeah. It's your next commercial. Yeah, it's, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, <laughs> it's so funny. I know it's like all manipulation. Like, 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 so we were trying to sell off our generator, you know, and I'm like, should we throw in there that, oh, there might be more lockdowns, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, hurry, you know? It's like, oh, no, now you're being one of those creepy, you know, people that like sell it on fear. Uh, uh, but it sold, so yeah. it no, didn't work. You hey, did, did you watch uh, the new Suicide? squad justin i need someone else to bro uh, i i need to do that for just for you okay, to, to see if i can validate so, uh because i know these guys yeah okay they're, they're, they're done with i feel like doug and i's word is yeah. enough dude. no i got like 15 dms from people who said you guys are crazy bro you are like you're smelling your own farts with your fucking following <laughs> bro they're all you're following always so they, hey just so you know I, pretty that argument with you all and right, adam you were so right you we're, were so a, right hey we'll do a youtube poll okay bro the i new get the same dms are just the opposite like fucking sal what's he talking about you know what I'm saying? 91, 88%. I just don't say 91. anything because they're all my followers. I know they're on my side. You know what I'm saying? No. Rotten Tomatoes ranked it very high. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. Just let it I know die, just bro. put a let poll out die. there and let see yeah, if bad. people that, that, that follow me you know, are, are up with your recommendations. Yeah, we'll have to do a comparison. Yeah, yeah. Justin will like it. Yeah, Because yeah, I'm somewhere, will. yeah, sometimes, you know, like especially the sci fi stuff, oh, like, yeah. I'm down. I, uh, I keep getting super excited about that foundation. Um, series that's going to come out on Apple because oh, yeah. dude, when's that drop? I think it's later in the fall, but um, there's there's quite a few movies. I think Dune's coming out soon. Yeah, you know, and, and so, I want to watch Will Smith. Excited. Will Smith. They did a he did a uh, um, what do you call that? Uh, not a biography. Is it bi not a biography where he's like he's the he's uh, Serena Williams' dad. So it's called I want to say like ah, fuck what's it called? Andrew, maybe you it's got called this a from movie. No, 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 no. The, the the name of the movie is like the the king or something like that. I don't remember what the, the the title of it. You wouldn't guess what it's about by the title, or at least I wouldn't be able to guess based off the title. Hmm. But Will Smith is is playing their their father, and they I guess they have a really cool story. Really? I'm not familiar with King it. Richard. Hey, king Richard. Hey, Thank you. Speaking of genetics, do those sisters, man, are jacked. Yeah, yeah but you tennis. know what? Uh, what's cool though oh, from the awesome preview, athletes. it sounds like they had a 
crazy story. So, like, as far as, like, I mean, yeah, genetics sure play some role, but, man, he had them training, like, crazy yeah, hard really yeah. early. You know what the problem with to that the is? the place where they actually had the cops, like, called on him for, like, uh, yeah. You know what the problem with that is? Is that a lot of parents see that, and they're like, oh, I'm going to make my kid a champion by <laughs> know. destroying their lives, you know? <laughs> I think, like, one out of a thousand times, you'll hit that special you know, Tiger Woods or Serena Williams or Venus Williams. Yeah, it'd but, be uh, interesting to see, too, if you had them play multiple sports instead of specializing so early and see what a difference that would have made versus them just, like, you know, really trying to specialize and, and you know, just work on the skill itself of tennis versus, like, diversifying that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Max starts uh, gymnastics tomorrow. Oh, does he really? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Oh. I mean, at his age, I think it's, like, mostly tumbling. Yeah. I think that's yeah, all they roll. Yeah, I think they just get him to Body play. awareness and stuff. Yeah, it's but, cool. but I'm excited excited to get him in there and just kind of interacting with the other kids and see if he's like if he takes I, I, to I it. can't promote it enough it's just done so much to transform especially upper body strength and just uh, uh athleticism in general and, and just body awareness is just totally transformed like both my kids so uh, that's been really cool i can't wait to like throw them in another sport but again it's really good for him so i'm like i'm trying to enjoy it well yeah i'm excited it. he's i mean this is all happening in this next so what's week. the what's the like, age limit the young so is, are he's you the youngest yet yeah, two yeah some so th places won't even take them at two really yeah some places they got to be three and above or four and above um but we found a place that would take them at two but like i said they basically and same thing with like his swim lesson stuff so he's got he's starting the gymnastics and swim and montessori school all next all next week everything's uh -huh. all coming at once oh that's a lot all at once. yeah yeah so i'm excited to see how that all that all goes cool. did you guys know that did you guys know the history on uh, montessori schools like how how it started and when it came from like no how, I yeah, I thought it was interesting. So that. it would, it, 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 I forget the name of the, the the girl's name. It's Montessori is in her name, right? So that's where it come, the the name of it comes from. But the original research was actually around like special needs kids, mm. and it's all sensory uh, teaching. So the, you know, because they were special needs kids, they used tools and things to to educate with them. And so like a lot of the stuff that we get recommended for him, I posted a video on it the other day, actually on the the main thread of he's got like all these little kits. Where there's like, you know, these round, like wet, slimy balls and like chunky dirt and you're and you're teaching them and they're also supposed to be feeling with their hands and yeah, it's, it's all the, tactile and this, yeah, the yeah. sensory edge what it does to the brain as far as speeding up the process of them learning whatever Interesting. it is. And that and it was originally for the special needs kids hmm. and that to try and progress them to catch them up to like normal kids. They actually had so much success with it that they began to apply it to just kids that were, weren't behind mm -hmm. and to see if it would actually progress. Oh, their, I've, only, their I've always heard good things cool. about what they do. Are you going to put your son in music? Oh, eventually, yeah. 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 The first thing is just because he seems like he's got a propensity for it. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that's where, uh, you know, it didn't look like it's going to be basketball or football or baseball <laughs> or the things that I was trying, you know? Like not, not initially, dude. It all changes. I know. He's yeah, only I, two, bro. Come on. Yeah. But you, know, you got, you got are... stories of kids that, I mean, you see, you see some kids, they just, they pick, they gravitate towards that. Yeah. And I, cause I don't force it, right? It's all there, right? So he definitely gravitates towards music. And he's, since the very beginning, I mean, I've told you guys that, that, Mm -hmm. He was interested in music videos. That hasn't changed. He's still like that. He he just gravitates. I mean, I'm just excited for him to be into something. I think as a dad, like that's what you want to see. And like a, that, mm -hmm. and I think the thing that I was so excited as a dad to have that opportunity to see something early and then promote it. Cause that was something I always, always said that I was, you know, again, back in the days when I used to feel sorry for myself and resent the way I was raised. One of the things I used to always get frustrated with is that my parents didn't like all the things I found, I found way later in life mm -hmm. because I pursued and I mm -hmm. found, and oh, I like this. And then I went after it. And those, so most of that stuff was like, you know, after teenage years and beyond. And I'm always, I always thought like, man, I wish my parents would have introduced this to me when I was little. I wish they would introduce that to me. And, and I could have been so much better if I was doing it since I was little. So I'm just excited to find something that he's interested in and then help per foster that and, yeah. and, and grow it and, and see where he yeah. goes with it. You know? Right now, uh, Aurelius is uh, obviously he's only nine months old, but he's super into food. That's what he's really into. <laughs> yeah, all right. We, I mean, the kid, if he like, you know what his favorite thing to eat is? So Jessica will make a tri-tip <laughs> and she'll blend some of it. So it's all, you know, you know, broken up into tiny, tiny pieces. And then she'll cook squash like spaghetti squash or uh i don't remember what, what the other name of the squash acorn squash and then she'll blend that like cook it blend that and then mix them together and add a little olive oil so this kid's eating like a protein like mm. his favorite thing to eat and he literally 
I have to stop feeding him because I'm I'm like this isn't I don't think how are you gonna hold all this in? he just keeps going <laughs> yeah. and then he gets angry so I'll feed him and he's and he gets excited like if I put it in his mouth he's like Ugh! he gets like this aggressive excitement and I'm laughing I'm like wow all right so I keep feeding him and then I'm he's like gonna be a little hoss dude. dude I tell I look at Jessica I'm like should I like keep going she's like we'll stop and see what happens so I'll yeah. stop and I'll wait and then he's like ah. I'm like, oh my God, kid, what are we going to do? <laughs> Grabs a club. Oh, yeah, where, where is he at with uh, weight and height right now? What percentile? Is I don't know. We were supposed to take him to the doctor, but we had, you know, obviously we were sick. So we're going to take him this week to see. But his height was good. He was always low on the weight, but I think that's changed now. He yeah, that's what I'm interested. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's, 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 he's chunking out. So <laughs> we'll see. That's great. Yeah. We'll see what happens. But it cracks me up, dude. I'm like, are you sure, kid? You want to keep going? <laughs> Because I feel like you're... No, it's fine. I can totally identify, though, with uh, the exposure of things and, like, finding out what the interests are and all that. Because it was like, dude, there's so much trial and error of, like, I I, I was so team sports driven. I had all these expectations about how they would have the same interests yeah. and all these things. And, like, meanwhile, all they want to do is, like, grab a stick and play swords out, you know, and, like, LARP. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, ah, what's happening? You know, and I was all freaking out. Like, yeah. these kids going to be super I'm, nerds or I, what? I'm hoping that when one of, uh, one of my kids gets passionate about lifting weights... Uh, uh, you know, that's what I want. I would love to just have my workout partner be one of my kids. I think they will. I think again, what you what you do as a parent is so much more important than what you say, and because you live that so much, like, we'll see. Oh, yeah. and because you don't push it on them, right? You're not you're not forcing it on. That's my like honestly, the whole basketball thing. Like, I put the pressure on me. I'm like, God, I'm not playing it enough. He's not seeing me play enough. Like, I just, uh -huh. just got to let him see me play, and then eventually he'll come that way. Just start, like just you know, just get super excited, like throw something in. The yeah. Hoop. Whoa! No, I always pull it out. I yeah. it, 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 I pull the basketball hoop out, and I'll go. I'll play by myself, oh. like hoping he'll come over and stuff. I do all that stuff. So it's slowly sure. working though. Like I, I mean, some of my motivation to coach these high school kids was to really to just like pull my boys into that environment and let them kind of uh -huh. hang out, you know, and see. And so I did, I was able to take them to practice not too long ago. And so, you know, they're having fun kind of messing around like around the campus and, and, and exploring and stuff. But then they finally kind of came in. And so I grabbed both of them and then had them hold pads like with me, like for, um, you know, they, they were doing offense. And so I put them on like this look for scrub defense. We hold pads and, and Ethan was just like, oh, my God. I'm like, yeah, just hold it there and like hit them with it. You know, as hard as you can. I'm looking at the guys. I'm like, dude, just don't like truck them you know, too hard. <laughs> like, you know, be reasonable. Yeah. And uh, so they did that and they're like, you know give them little shoves and hits and all that. And I could just see them get all fired up about it. You oh, know? Wow. It was cool. Oh, yeah, it was cool. cool. You got, okay. So I got something else cool for you, Justin. Are you familiar with the, I think I'm saying it right. A Takama alien. A Takama. <laughs> yeah. So look this up, Doug. Uh, so we could see a picture of this. So this was, and it's the Atacama region of somewhere. Okay, so this is like, are we talking about like Star Trek universe here? Are we talking like no, Star Wars? No, no, no. This are is we a Chile. About, like, illegal alien. Is this real illegal alien? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Takama alien. This guy named Atacama. <laughs> <laughs> no, in I'm Chile's not that country. Chile's Atacama Desert, they found this skeleton, that right there. And it's a, oh, it's a, no, it's how a, did I not know this? It's a real skeleton. And so there was all this speculation like, how big is that? Tiny. It's like six inches or something like that. It or, looks like somebody took like chicken bones and just kind of like, And they're like, is this, this real? Is this an alien? Because it's got like this cone head, it's got a little leprechaun. Big eyes. And, it, you know, the rib cage is weird. And, but they Whoa, finally were able to extract some DNA and do some testing. Yeah. And it's human. It it's was a little human. It was some some gen, some like fetus with some genetic you know deformity Deform yeah, deformation. that they found, and so it's a human skeleton. Whoa, but yeah, shit. but how 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 tiny is that, Doug? Does I think it say? I think it was six inches, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. So, yeah, really small. So yeah, little six fetus. inch long. Yeah, but they they literally. I mean, because look at that, and they for a long time they couldn't figure out what the hell it was. Is this thing real? Is See, this it? says 2018. How do you find some weird stuff like this randomly, <laughs> like today? Like, what uh, are you? What are you reading that this comes up in your? I don't know, but we're probably on the same website. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know, sure. <laughs> <laughs> there's one of them where they were like speculating there was. Uh, like pyramids in Antarctica and all. I'm like, really? You know, yeah. so I'm like reading it right away. It's all bullshit, you know? Speaking <laughs> of which, it. speaking of which, uh, I think it was in Greenland. I'm going to find this article that they, there was a like a um, iceberg or something that they went into and found 
1500 year old i gotta find this it was 1500 year old uh oh it's a tibetan glacier viruses so they found viruses oh my god in these glaciers that we'd never seen before that are a thousand five hundred years old and i'm like no no no, don't worry yeah these ones <laughs> oh, can't. don't worry yeah, yeah. it's like uh, yeah it just you know, ex- like multiple species were extinct, uh, well, you know, back then so because of them. Sorry, 15,000 years old. My bad. And these uh, viruses, they're like, no, 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 these can't infect us uh, because we're looking at them under my- microscope. So it looks all good. But we've never seen these before. But this just goes to show you uh, that there's a like if some of this stuff melts. Well, this we is could- what they're worried about with the permafrost because all of those like underlying diseases and like yeah viruses and things like <laughs> reemerge and just kind of find their way to a host. <laughs> yeah, bro. Especially when they're discovering them. Yeah. What's this? Yeah. I don't know. Let's go bring it home. But our happens. idea is to resurrect mammoths. So this is why all these billionaires are trying to build rockets to get us off this planet. Yeah, they hey, know something more than all of us. Hey, what happened with... Uh, didn't, didn't Bezos sue... <laughs> yeah, Bezos is suing NASA right now. What was what? the deal again? Why did he sue him again? I guess... I, I didn't even know you could sue over this. So I guess NASA was trying to get bids for contracts for something. So they had SpaceX, they had Blue Origin, and they had like another one. And the article that I read, I think that the NASA alluded that they were going to use at least two of the three. And I guess that the quote that Bezos gave them, like it was like $5.9 billion was like double of what uh, SpaceX was. And so they went with like SpaceX. And so now he's trying to sue because they're not, they're not also including him. He in sounds this. like a baby. Yeah. yeah it's I don't like, know, dude. <laughs> they obviously you know you offered can. a lower price point. Like, yes. come on, guy. Yes. You so, know, hey, this is totally like, it's becoming like an ego like you know, like fight. Oh, dude, that's what it's been about the whole time. It seems like to me. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. a bunch. Like they're super like billionaires, and they got like, nothing better. To I do. was watching an interview one time, and I don't remember who the billionaire was, and they they were getting asked questions about stuff like that, about uh, you know, fucking with each other, mm-hmm. and they're saying that like a big percentage of like the moves and stuff that they do when you're at that level is is purely just like that. Is mm-hmm. just to like you know out of acqu- spite. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. Just acquire well, a company, company knowing that it's not going it. to really help your business very much with that, but it's just because you know it's going to fuck the guy you, know you what, don't though? like. It kind of sounds fun. Like let's be honest. Of, of course you like, would do that. That's a game, dude. Of course yeah. you would do that. Yeah, like yeah. be honest. If all of us were billionaires and we're all friends, dude, you know we would fuck. Well, with how each do other. they get there? Like they're the most competitive, like driven people, like out there. It's like what what's left That's of what them I'm to be and If somebody about. rubs you the wrong way, right? You were going to do a deal with them, and then they back out last minute. You motherfucker. Like, and then you have an you. opportunity yeah. to acquire and block them in some business move. And like, you know, a hundred million dollar purchase of a company for you ain't no big deal. And if it's enough to cause him a fucking headache. <laughs> totally. <laughs> like, where does his mom work? Okay, cool. I'm buying the company and firing her. <laughs> she's, she's now my employee. <laughs> the company's in the in the red, though. I don't care. I bet there would be, there's got to be like a book around stories that have the, this has happened because it would actually be really interesting to well, read Well, it reminds me of that show Billions, you know, like they yeah. kind of get into that. That. Totally, it's, it's totally believable, you know, that they would like go to that level a lot of times where it's just like, just literally out of spite, I'm going to do this. Well, even there, though I'm losing money on it. This reminds me of this this uh, kid who he was bullied in high school like crazy by like three or four other boys, and the way he got revenge. This is a true story. Is he slept with all of their moms? I heard about this. <laughs> Did you hear this? <laughs> no. It's like the ultimate champion move right oh there. my yeah. god like, talk yeah. about winning that battle like oh you threw me in the <laughs> garbage pull that off 10 dude. times yeah i'm having sex with your ugly mom <laughs> <laughs> just banging the hell out of her and i'm gonna send you a video of it <laughs> wow dude, a, what, what a power move oh yeah dude, total. <laughs> speaking of which we can't post this on the on the obviously on the on the video but uh my cousins sometimes will send you know videos of like funny stuff or whatever and there's this video of this couple they have like a, one of those like nest cams or whatever in their bedroom and it's a married couple and they're having sex and then all of a sudden they're fucking like toddler like bust through the room with the dog and she's like <laughs> on top of him and they're like they freeze 
and the little kid's like, "Mommy, I don't." You know, and I'm cracking up, bro. This video is so good. We're, work, we're working on moves here. We're yeah, wrestling. What are you guys doing? Yeah, yeah. how do you explain on? that? Yeah. Why is mommy bouncing on you? Oh, it's oh, it such a funny. Sorry, we yeah. can't post <laughs> that video. <laughs> Because it's a little bit. Uh, yesterday I took. So yesterday was my day, a day in the life, right on the on the main page or whatever. So there's like a. I, I was telling Choki, I, was, I apologized to her. I said, "Sorry, mine wasn't as as active as I normally am on there because there was like a two and a half hour break that I had because I fell asleep." And I guess I'm not all the way recovered because I took Max out on that. We have we bought him one of those. I don't know what you call them, the little. Little cart things that you pull behind the bike. Yeah, well, I don't know, mm -hmm. little, you know what I'm talking about. Like oh little, yeah, 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 yeah. So you ride your bike. He sits yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. So how does that work? He's loving it right okay. now, right? So he's all into it. And uh, I took a train. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll take him it's out. Like a sidecar. Feeling better. I'm like, that'd be cool. So I just took him around for I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, maybe 30. You got exhausted. Oh, dude, <laughs> I, I didn't really realize it till afterwards. I came home and I sat down and like kind of watching him play around, and then eventually moved him over to the the beanbag and I laid down and completely passed out and was out for like two and a half hours. And I still slept that night because normally if I do something like that, it'll ruin my sleep for the night. Slept again. So I, I definitely can tell that I still then obviously have like this fatigue. And I noticed that the other day when I tried to lift a little bit of weights, it's like I'm, I'm not full. Like I feel 100%. Yeah. You then, look, you look, you look pretty good. But my energy, the energy, yeah, the energy isn't yet. all the way there. And I'm sure there's also some connection too. Just to, uh, calorie wise, I'm still really low. Like, mm. I'm, I'm, well, I mean, you did nothing. You were isolated. You probably didn't eat that much. Yeah. It's, and then you're recovering, right? Yeah, so yeah. of course. But I'm getting back to my my taste is starting to come back, and so I'm sure my appetite's going to slowly start. To yeah, I did it. today. I did. Uh, I worked out legs for the second time. All I did was three sets of squats and three sets of stiff legged deadlift. That's it. And I know right now I could tell that was too much. Yeah. You know, you know, you can tell. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get sore. I already feeling yeah. the, the. Oh floor. yeah, I'm already feeling it. So I'm like, damn it, dude! I thought I was going hella easy. That just just goes to show you, man. <laughs> dude, it's hard to well, yeah, I'm beating up my joints though, trying to get all interactive, uh, you know, coaching and oh, stuff. Yeah. It's so stupid, <laughs> dude. I was like, what am I? Are you doing? still uh, peddling all of our supplements to uh, all the kids 100%. over there? Like, <laughs> oh yeah, anything and everything, dude. I'm slinging Organifi like crazy, dude. Uh, actually, they love it. Like uh, I've had a lot of good uh, replies. Of about especially uh you know the, the vanilla protein powder like they're all Good. about it yeah and, and mixing it and so uh I at least have some kids like trying to up their calorie intake and protein intake specifically because they haven't even really considered that like it's not something that i think um a lot of these student athletes even you care too much about uh is really like being adamant about you know like fueling their body like going into these crazy uh you know rigorous practices oh, pr protein shakes can make a huge difference for for teenagers because they have no idea i had no idea like yeah. when i was a kid i thought and i was into working out and everything i thought because i ate a bologna and cheese sandwich that oh yeah, Dude, that was protein yeah i got yeah. some good protein in yeah. there it's like you know 10 grams of protein and i remember one year where I was at my grandmother's house for, I think it was like a month because both of my parents uh, went to Italy for a month. And my grandma being, you know, my Sicilian grandma will pretty much make me whatever I want when it comes to, and if I don't, she'll make me something anyway. So I have no choice but to tell her what I want. And she said, you know, what do you want to eat? What do you like? I said, uh, I like steak. And so we, my grandma made me steak for breakfast, steak for lunch, steak for dinner. <laughs> and in a month, I dude, remember I got, so awesome. I got so strong. I want to hire your grandma, yeah. dude. Like I got so strong and I built so much. And I was like, what? Could it be the steak? I didn't realize that what I thought was eating enough yeah. protein wasn't enough protein. It was just, you know, because I had a bowl of cereal, I thought. <laughs> I remember when I first figured that out with sandwiches. Like I used to count like a, you know, a, a meat sandwich from like Togo's or something as like a yeah. high protein. Yeah, it's but, like minuscule. Yeah, most places on like a large sandwich, like the standard is like four ounces of meat. It's, I know. It's ridiculous. Four ounces of turkey meat is like nothing. And so you have this massive thousand calorie Subway bread. sandwich, all, all bread and <laughs> yeah. sauces and stuff like that. And then it's like it's 20, cheaper. 20 grams of protein in it. Yeah. I know how you're going cheap on this because, dude, yeah, when I actually had a decent sandwich, I think it was at Beach Hut, and it was like, oh, wow, they actually oh, yeah. like hook it up. I've spent seventy dollars on sandwiches. Oh for my god! Four people. Wow! What? I almost shit my pants. I wow! Was like, this is insane. Wow, that's expensive. They, is this inflation meat, or is yeah, this like double meat? I, normal. I actually found a sandwich that I really like. Uh, with, it's got glu I, I put gluten free bread on it. Do you guys do this? I do this. This is annoying about me. If I like something, add it to the list. Yeah, one more thing. If <laughs> one I more thing. <laughs> if I like something, I'll just I'll I'll consume it until I hate it.
Like that's the goal. The goal is <laughs> this is great. I'm going to keep doing this until I hate it. And yeah. I do that with food. So like I'll like a dish and then that's what I'm going to eat every day until I get sick of it. I, yeah. Well, I do the same thing. I don't think of like the same that. way though. I just look at it. I, when I find something I like, I don't like to fuck that up. So like if I go to a restaurant yeah. and I try something and I'm like, wow, that was so good. Yeah. I know it's so good that that's probably what attracts me to come back to that restaurant. Right. And so then when I'm looking at the menu about other things, I'm like, God, do I really want to try this other thing? Because I know that halibut's hella good. Like, right. and, and, you, and so you play that game and then you actually like, oh, you know, I should just order another item on there. And then you get totally disappointed and you're like, no, should like, have done like that. the worst. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I get stuck in that. I get stuck like that for sure. Okay. Well, I, how about I find this? I really like. How about this then? Let's forget food for a second. What about music? If you find a song that you like, do you listen to the shit, at, to the shit out of it until yeah. it, it, it I do okay. that all the time. All right. Yeah. So I'm not the only one. I just yeah. do that with everything. I think that's normal behavior. Is it? Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. It's yeah. not dysfunctional. <laughs> no, it's like you look forward to it. You know, like, oh, I want to put that on my car on the way home. And then, yeah, you've just done that way too many times. Yeah. And then you hate it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, real quick. I hope you're enjoying this episode. Listen to this, moms and dads. You feed your kids baby food, but you want them to be healthy. One of the best companies for some of the healthiest baby food that we found anywhere is Serenity Kids. I mean, we're talking about grass-fed beef and bone broth and no preservatives and grain-free snacks. Great stuff. It's actually the only uh, baby food that I give to my nine-month-old son. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you actually get a discount. Head over to MySerenityKids.com and then use the code MP20, so that's MP20, for 20% off your first order. You're very welcome. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from Sal Rules, Adam Drools, 420. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, this person couldn't this be more This name. person could be more fucking I bet lame. this is going to be a really good question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I bet it's going to be good. Yeah. Can your hormonal profile affect where your fat is distributed on your body? Yes, next question. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I mean, it, it definitely can. Yeah. Like They'll find yeah. that men, when their estrogen levels uh, rise or are too high, they'll store more body fat in more feminine places, like on their hips or their chest. Yeah. I shared example. this. Remember, I shared this when I was going through all this. When I, when I came off of testosterone, and I remember telling you guys, that we talked more off air than on air, but I know I've mentioned it on air, where I was like, man, you were getting a fat booty. I remember yeah, that. I was, man, it was <laughs> jiggly. It was, yeah. no, I, I got like around my my hips and my obliques, like just in, it was. <laughs> I remember when you told us that, I was trying not to laugh. Yeah, the way I remember you were I was like, bro, yeah. this is weird. I just don't like what it, what I'm seeing right yeah. now. And in, in women, it was different. In, in women that will have like really high stress and high cortisol, they'll store it more in their gut mm. and in their belly. And they find in studies that women who store more body fat in the places that traditionally women, right, will store them, a hips, butt area, will have healthier offspring and will have better health than women who store similar amount of body fat, but in places where aren't they're not traditionally, you know, supposed to be storing it. So yeah, hormones can definitely play a role in, in where you store body fat. And of course, it could play a role in how much body fat right. you store. Like the studies on- yeah. On men, on because I know you know ever since working with uh, you know Dr. Rand and, and the their hormone clinic, I've done more reading on this, and they'll do studies with men who will go on testosterone replacement therapy. So they'll go from low testosterone to high testosterone, and they'll find that even without working out, they're just leaner as a result. Their oh, body yeah. will just burn more body fat. Yeah. Oh, wow. uh, so this could definitely happen. But th th what's the moral story? Just be healthy. Yeah. Right. Just be healthy overall. Well, it was interesting. I think I, I picked this question because so Courtney and I were actually like when we were down in San Luis, um, we were just people watching and we were at this pier and uh, these two guys were kind of walking by and it they had more of like a pear shape, you know, and like and she was asking me about that. I was like, oh, that's so strange. Like it didn't look like a normal fat distribution for, for men. Didn't you share a study a long time ago, actually, that they showed that, that like like men that store body fat there had higher levels of estrogen? Yeah, I, I yeah think that's you what I speculated. That. I was like, it was yeah, I think you shared that a long time ago. Yeah, and, and they'll show, again, that a person's body fat distribution will change based on the hormones. So there's definitely a genetic component but the hormones also influence kind of what's happening. So like and that can change. That can change, absolutely. So again, if you're unhealthy, then your body fat distribution will start to look a little bit off. And you know it's funny because body fat distribution generally tends to be a particular way, 
as a trainer, I remember early on being being able to accurately identify clients that had liposuction. Oh yeah, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I was, I remember the first time this happened. I was early trainer, and I'm testing this woman's body fat percentage, and she's she wanted to hire a trainer because she wanted to lose weight. And I remember I go to test her bicep and tricep. So you know, one of the classic caliper tests is you do bicep, tricep, subscapula, right? So right below the shoulder blade, and then the suprailiac crest, right, which is kind of the, the crest of the pelvis here, right below it. So I go, you know, I do all those, and then I get to the tricep, and the tricep measurement for her was lower than the bicep measurement, which never happens. Mm -hmm. It never happens. Tricep measurement is almost always higher, especially in women, than bicep. And I tested it, and I did it like several times. I'm like, this isn't right. And then just instinctively, uh, I'm like, have you had liposuction? And she's like, yeah. She thought I was like some kind of brilliant genius. I'm like, no, it's because... <laughs> Your tricep measured yeah, lower doesn't than- doesn't normally do that. Yeah, yeah, and when they do that, when they do liposuction, it doesn't change your body's ability to store body fat. It just does it in weird- I've ways. always thought that you look better too. You, I feel like you look better with a higher higher body fat percentage, more fat on your body, evenly distributed yes. than it, it taken in certain places. Mm -hmm. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, like yes. I remember I saying that to clients, like, you know, I know you think that you want to do this lipo thing, but it, it just doesn't look natural. It doesn't look right for you to suck- 20 pounds of fat only out of your gut or only out of your thighs because yep. then it looks doesn't look evenly distributed and just the way our body stores fat if you're healthy hormonally it looks like something's and off and then you have like yeah. pockets of it I've seen sometimes yeah. too where it's like yeah so it just doesn't distribute the same after that no no it looks it looks weird and can actually look uh, unhealthy a as a result agreed um, so yeah where you put body fat on your body can actually show uh, or display if you're healthy or not. And people will instinctively know this. You know, when female athletes, Adam, you, you might be interested in this, uh, high-level female athletes tend to store less body fat in their limbs than the average female. So women tend to store more in their limbs than men do. Mm -hmm. And the, obviously it's because it offsets their center of gravity if they're pregnant or whatever. But female athletes at high levels, and this is probably a genetic thing, tend to be leaner in their limbs because it obviously leaner limbs frees you up to be more oh, athletic interesting. or whatever. Yeah. Sure. Next question is from Eric Pepper. How long should a bulk and cut last? Oh yeah. Here's a good rule of thumb. 27 days. With a bulk. <laughs> exactly. <Boom. laughs> Specifically. Wouldn't it be great if that was it? Just There's your answer. Yeah. yeah. 175 Simple. hours. No, um, here's a good rule of thumb that I used to go by with a bulk and a cut. If I'm bulking and my strength is going up and I'm adding mostly muscle, then I'd, I would stay on it. The minute that I notice my weight's going up but my strength isn't going up and I'm adding way more body fat or I'm not adding muscle anymore, I'm just gaining body fat, then I would switch out of it. And then with a the cut, when my strength would really start to dive and I started to lose muscle, and this requires tracking, body fat tests and stuff like that. When I noticed that, uh-oh, I'm losing weight, but the weight I'm losing is muscle, then I would switch out of it. So that was kind of the the metric that I would use. So I like spending four to six weeks in the one that's more difficult for you and two weeks in the one that's easier for you. So if you're somebody who typically can put on weight fairly easy, then a bulk, I would only bulk them for a couple weeks and then spend more time in the cut four to six weeks. And if the opposite is true, then I would spend four to six weeks on the other direction and then cut for the two weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So depending on which one, and that's just, I mean, there's no... There's no real science to support that that's superior than any way. That's just, just when you coach people. Yeah, like, just yeah. it's something that I've found over years have worked has worked well with myself and then people that I've coached. To, I mean, we talk about the benefits of and, the, and there's plenty of research and science to support the benefits of moving in and out of cuts and bulks <clears throat> and not staying in either one of them for an extended period of time. So mm -hmm. I think the the science is out on that. I think everybody agrees on that. But exactly how many weeks you should spend in each one, I think there's such a genetic variance. And I think that doing spending more time in the one that is a little bit more challenging for you and then less time in the one that your body responds to faster has just made sense for me and has yeah. done well for clients that I've coached that way. I also like uh, for somebody who has, let's say, a lot of weight to lose, you know, let's say I want to lose 50 pounds, right? So that's, that would be a long cut, but I, I would break up every three or four weeks, I'd break up that cut with... Yeah. Mm -hmm whatever you want to call it, a diet break or whatever, where I'd put them at a slight bulk or even just at maintenance. So like, okay, every right. four weeks, we're going to do four days 
where we bump your calories up and put or you the in the inverse of that too, right? If you're trying to gain. Yes. And it, it there's a couple benefits to that. Well, first off, studies show that it actually helps with the fat loss and reduces the the muscle loss that can happen from going into a cut, but also psychologically, like even bulking. I know a lot of people cut a lot and trying to lose weight and they think, oh, I would love to be on a long bulk. I'm going to tell you, coming from a, you know, someone's an ectomorph, right? Being in a long bulk, psychologically at some point, you're just like, I don't want to eat. Like, I don't want to stuff my face anymore. This is like super tedious and I don't like this. So then if I did like a three-day cut, it would like reinvigorate me. And then I go back to the bulk and start to feel better. Uh, you know, when I would start eating more. And calories. I think that's the key takeaway from a question like this is because it, there isn't no there. And I, I jokingly said 27 days. And that the point of me joking about that was that there isn't like this specific yeah, there's no hard and fast rule. Is there, there isn't, there isn't, there's some, some basic uh, general rules as far as not staying in it for too long of a period of time. I think spending uh, two months, so eight weeks and beyond in, in, in any particular one with no break at all is not ideal. So if you are, Cutting, staying in a calorie deficit for eight weeks straight with no break is not ideal. Mm -hmm. I think the same thing for a bulk. If your goal is to bulk and you're eight weeks consistently and you've been bulking and you haven't had a break where you do a lower calorie day, I think that's not ideal. But everything in the middle of that, I think it's really about personal preference and then what you're most likely to stay consistent with and do. So I, I liked kind of doing the 4-2 thing just because it was I was constantly breaking up whatever the client was doing in a month's time. They never were doing the same, you know, following the same meal plan or calorie plan for longer than a, a four-week time. Yeah, I can get, psychologically, I, that yeah, works. Yeah, psychologically, I could convince anybody to like, all right, for the next 30 days, this is what we're going to do. Just stay, stick to the plan, and then I'm going to do this to you. And mm -hmm. then, they okay, they have something to look forward to versus, oh, we're just going to inevitably, or we're going to be in this bulk forever or cut forever. Next question is from Katie Conton. What are the pros and cons of drinking coffee versus energy drinks? Oh, yeah. You know, you know what's funny about this is that that coffee is genuinely objectively healthy. Yeah. It's full of antioxidants. They've tried to so hard to create studies where it shows the detriments of coffee yep. uh, to to their dismay. Yeah, I mean, now all of course, you know, caffeine. You can overdo caffeine, and there's a big difference between people in terms of what's too much or what's too little. But that set aside, coffee's natural. It's full of antioxidants. Mm -hmm. It's it's a natural drink that shows lots of health benefits. Energy drinks essentially are trying to recreate what you get from coffee. Now, here's the benefit that I could see from uh, energy drinks or like pre-workouts. Pre-workouts will often include other compounds that might have some benefit like beta alanine, for example, or maybe citrulline might be in there or theanine, an mm -hmm. amino acid that balances out uh, the caffeine. But uh, And then here's the other thing. Coffee, some people have an intolerance to. I mean, it is made from beans. Yeah. So for some people, like coffee for me, it's hit or miss. Sometimes it bothers my gut. Sometimes it doesn't. Whereas if I do like a caffeine pill, that never bothers uh, my well, gut. Well, it kind of reminds me of uh, sort of, uh, I guess, pharmaceuticals versus like uh, herbs or, you know, like kind of going a little yeah. bit more in that direction, like something that's a little more uh, condensed, like versus... Uh, you know, like artificially manufactured versus something that you can just grind up and take off of a tree. Uh, and, and so there's some like natural pathways there for the body to absorb it. Uh, but yeah, I, as long as you're not adding all these extra um, items in there, which you're going to find in most Starbucks and most, you know, like if it's just like the pure source is coffee and you don't, and you know your amount uh, that and how it affects you and you can kind of manage that. Uh, I really don't see a well, whole lot of problems. There's also natural limiters because of that too, yeah. which I think are po another positive of coffee, right? So even if you, so nitro brew uh, cold pressed coffee is probably the highest level of caffeine. Yeah. One of them, right? Right. Yeah. One, so, and, yeah. but is nothing compared to a rock star, which is pumping out 220, you know, <laughs> milligrams of, of caffeine in a single dose Bro, I had a or pre -workout a pre-workout that's 450 yes. milligrams. Exactly. So you get up there quickly going through coffee is you're probably less likely to overdo it. Right. Even though all the positive health benefits of caffeine and all the research around it that we've, we've seen for the most part, it's pretty good for you. But I do think there it, it starts to have an adverse effect when you get climb up to a certain amount. I think that's just a lot less likely to happen drinking cups of coffee mm -hmm. versus 
pre-workouts and taking energy drinks totally. that they've got at 4x the totally. dose. Yeah. Doug, how much coffee would you have to drink to get 400 milligrams of caffeine? Maybe we can look that up. Because that'd be a big ass. It's like a pot of coffee. Right. Yeah. Like you'd have to drink a lot to get that. And I had an energy. I told you guys, was it two weeks ago? When I went to the the supplement store and I got all excited, you know, because I, I do that when those in supplement stores, and I said, "Oh, look at this drink. This is, <laughs> this looks fun." Yeah. Uh, and it's like it was a small bottle. It wasn't even that big of a bottle, but it packed a punch, you know. So let's see, what does that say there? <clears throat> yeah, one cup of coffee is ninety five milligrams. Four. You have to have more than four cups, right? So you know, thirty two ounces. Yeah. Of coffee, just to equal. Do you know what has the most caffeine of uh, of any coffee or whatever? The light brews. The light brews, yeah. I thought yeah. it was the dark ones. I know. It, it would seem that way because yeah. because the taste of it is more bold. But yep. No, the, the like the, the, light, the light, like blonde espressos mm -hmm. and stuff like that are the highest. But, but yeah, that's my point is that I think that going the natural route, you're less likely to overdo it. Totally. And I think the way they... And, and what I've seen, at least in the last decade with these uh, pre-workouts, is that they just keep pressing, pressing it. And I, I don't think we're going to see it slow down anytime soon. Is everybody yeah. just keeps kind of tolerance goes up? Yeah, it keeps go. I mean, it was it used to be a big deal to have 200 milligrams in a pre workout. Like that mm -hmm. was a like a serious pre workout. That's a starter dose now. Yeah, yeah. now yeah. it's pretty standard to see 300 plus in a pre workout. So that's my that would be my concern of doing it with the. Yeah, it's funny you brought up like the blonde roasting because uh, you know I'm a big like nitro connoisseur. And I had a, a nitro coffee at this like total hipster place thinking that, you know, I was gonna have the same experience pretty much out of, but it was, it, I think it was made from a uh, blonde roast. Mm. Like, and so <laughs> it was like rocket fuel. Like I, I okay. hadn't experienced anything that powerful in a while. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, well, coffee's not sexy. It's cheap. Uh, so the supplement companies aren't going to promote coffee, yeah. but if you want, Here's something you can do is you could buy beta alanine in bulk and it's cheap, right? You could buy citrulline, which is the amino acid supposedly gives you a better pump. You know, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll debate that, but that's fine. You buy that in bulk, buy some theanine in bulk, and then take those with coffee and you've got yourself a great pre-workout and it's cheap. And it's yeah. very, now it's not going to taste like, you know, bubble gum or, you know, <laughs> unicorn hair or whatever they, they name these things. <laughs> But it's uh, it's definitely going to give you the same effect, but it's natural. Next question is Bar uh, from Barkley Sankova. Any tips for college students on how to manage school, work, training, social activities, family, and not get crazy? <laughs> yeah, you know what the problem is with have kids a kid. Now. No, just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, the, really fine. Time you know what the problem is with kids these days? I, here we go. Old man rant. Here yeah. we go. They th they they think they can have everything, like everything. You know what I mean? Like, hey, how do I balance? Building a business yeah. and partying with my friends, or how do I? You know, and if I can't do it, maybe I sh shouldn't do it. You know? There's, there's, you, it's priorities, and you got to balance it out. And look, here's the deal with exercise, and this is very true: two full body workouts a week, three full bodies of wor workouts a week max will give you great muscle building benefits. So if you're a college student, you want to lift weights, you want to build muscle, but you also obviously have a crazy schedule, and there's other priorities. Just go to the gym twice a week, do a bunch of compound lifts, train your full body, and you'll get great results doing that. Now, will it be better if you did a three days full body or maybe, yeah, probably, but two days a week is not much. It's only two, two and a half hours total a week and, and that's all you got to do. Yeah, well, you got you to gotta manage the things that you can manage, right? You're not going to change school. You're not going to change work. Your work schedule is your work schedule, so long as you have to, right? If you have to work to pay the bills and do things with, as most people have to, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have your work schedule. Nothing's going to change there. Uh, school, if you're going through your degree, uh, you're going to have to go to your classes. You're going to have to study to pass your tests. Like those things are not really controllable. here. <laughs> like you're, you're going to have to do it. You can become more efficient, sleep better. So you're more productive at work and make sure you're studying like you're supposed to, to be, be more efficient at school and not waiting till last minute. But as far as time in that, you're, you're going to probably have to spend that where there's nothing we can do to help you there. Training to your point, Sal, yeah, do something that is like a MAPS anabolic protocol that it's a, you know, two to three times a week is all you need to be. They don't need to dedicate more than that. So you don't need to be in the gym five to seven days a week for an hour plus. 
And then the other one's social activities and family. It's like, then that's on you to decide mm -hmm. how important those things are to you currently right now. I think sometimes too, that you, we feel like you have to do those things. Like if I have specific goals, like maybe to knock my degree out or save X amount of money, those mm -hmm. things might suffer a little bit temporarily while I'm getting, you do the things you have to do now so you can do the things you want to do later. Yeah. So if you got to get, if you're trying to get your degree done, you're trying to get, knock that out. So maybe you're not doing the same amount of social activities and maybe as much family time as you would like to, but you also have a temporary goal you're trying to achieve. Yeah, you got to stack them up and prioritize what's the most important items to hit. But uh, I, I honestly, I feel that, you know, this period of your life, you're, you're most resilient for a reason. Uh, and this is, if any time is the time to really stack everything on top of each other, yep. like you can handle this. Like I, dude, I mean, just thinking back about that, it was a whirlwind. Uh, you know, I was uh, full time committed to to playing football. I was full time having to run workouts with that, and had a job, and then a full like you know schedule for school. Uh, obviously, like my family probably was the one that I kind of pushed aside because they were like uh, in California and I was in Illinois. Yeah. So that was kind of easy. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot of social life, but uh, you know, it, it's a compromise. So uh, you just kind of got to figure that out. But uh, I mean, do it now so you can figure out how, how to really structure time management uh, and deal with it while you're still resilient. That's a good point. And here's the other thing too. I think you realize this as you get older, that when you get a mortgage and a wife and a job and kids, yeah, you it doesn't go away. Like no. it's just keeps getting piled on. Yes, you look, my point. You look back, you're like, I remember when I used to think I was busy. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> when I would it, kill for that schedule it, now. Yeah, it doesn't even. That's not even considered busy anymore. Now, if, if I if I had that schedule before, like I had before, it'd be pretty uh, pretty wide open. You have to it, schedule. This is a big one. This is something I think you learn as you get older. Is that you create yourself schedule and you plan things out. So you can no longer just work out when you have an opening. You might have to do it at 5 a.m. every, you know, in the morning or, you know, you can't just drop at the, you know, at the drop of a dime, go out and hang out with your friends. You have to study. This is my study time and I dedicate it at this time. I think if you organize your schedule, you'll find that you could become way more productive uh, with the same amount of hours uh, in the day. Look, if you like our content, you like our information, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. Head over there, check out our guides. They can help you build muscle, burn body fat. They can help you squat better, even become a better personal trainer. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, me at mindpumpsal, and Adam at mindpumpadam.